Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about myelination. So a myelin sheath is a many layered covering composed of lipid and protein that surrounds the axons of most neurons. So the myelin sheath acts as insulation of the wires of the nervous system. So, I mean, and when I say the wires, I'm talking about the axons of the neurons. So the axons of a neuron, or the axon of a neuron, its job is to transmit an action potential or an impulse along its length, um, which is basically conducting an electrical current along its length so that it can send its signal to another neuron or to an effector, a muscle or gland. So uh, we have a myelin sheath that's basically the insulation of the wiring. So the myelin sheath acts to uh, insulate the axon to increase the speed of nerve impulse conduction. That's the most important difference. And then it also acts as uh, protection for the axon. Um, but most importantly, the difference is going to be in the speed of the nerve impulse conduction. And neuroglia is a whole category of cells in the nervous system that have a supportive role in, compared to the neurons. So the neurons are the cells of the nervous system that actually generate the action potentials and do the real work of the nervous system. The neuroglia, uh, there are many, many more neuroglia than neurons, and they act as the support crew to support the neurons in performing their functions. Uh, so there are many, there are different types of neuroglia with many different functions, and, but they're all to support and protect and nourish uh, the neurons in a variety of different ways. So here's one example <clears throat> of where we have um, neuroglia that are performing a supportive function for the neurons. And that's that the neuroglia produce the myelin sheaths by wrapping themselves around and around and around the axons. And it could be as many as a hundred times around an axon to make hundred layers. Uh, so in the peripheral nervous system, we have Schwann cells that wrap around the axon. And in the central nervous system, we have oligodendrocytes that wrap themselves around the axon. So the difference in conduction or how that nerve impulse travels down the length of the axon, um, there, there is a difference. So if we have unmyelinated axons, we have continuous conduction. So it's the type of travel of nerve impulses down the length of an unmyelinated axon. So it's like what we see in the bottom picture, all the way at the bottom, the unmyelinated axon, um, that would be continuous conduction or in the top picture that's showing what's happening inside of the axon. So when there's going to be an action potential, the cell has to be polarized, meaning that we have a separation of charges. So on the inside of the axon, it will be very negative, and on the outside, it will be more positive compared to the inside of the axon. So that's a polarized neuron, and that would be what that neuron is doing at rest when it's waiting to receive enough stimulus to generate an action potential. So then if it does reach threshold, it, re it receives enough stimulus to generate an action potential. That opens the gates that allow some of the positive ions from outside the cell to flood into the axon. And that's what we see in that top picture in number one. So as the inside becomes increasingly more positive, that causes the gates in the segment next door to also open so that there's a rushing in of positive um, ions. At the same time, that first segment immediately starts to repolarize, meaning it starts to pump out the positive ions so that it goes back to its resting state, so that it's ready to generate another action potential again. But as that action potential, as we have those positive ions flow in, it causes the next segment to um, continue that action potential. And so that way the action potential tra travels all the way down the axon. Um, so that's continuous conduction is when one segment is constantly triggering um, the impulse to continue in the next neighboring segment. 
saltatory conduction is the type of conduction that happens when there is myelination. So when the axon is myelinated, the way the action potential travels is a little bit different. Uh, so it's the type of travel of nerve impulses down the length of a myelinated axon. So in this case, the current is carried through the interstitial fluid of the myelin sheath and through the cytosol from one node to the next. Okay, so when I say node, I'm talking about the node of Ranvier, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Uh, but those are, in short, just the gaps between the myelination that we see, uh, like in both of these pictures. So there's a segment of myelination formed by um, oligodendrocytes or Schwann cells, depending on what part of the nervous system we're in. And the gaps in between are where we have the nodes of Ranvier. Uh, the impulse appears to leap from node to node because the impulse travels extremely quickly in the segment where there is myelination. And so it looks like that impulse is jumping from segment to segment to segment. Um, so because it's jumping essentially from segment to segment to segment, it causes the impulse to go way faster than in continuous conduction. So in continuous to conduction, we're going segment by segment by segment where we're depolarizing versus in saltatory conduction, we're hopping further and faster. So it causes the impulse to get from the cell body all the way to the end of the axon much faster than it does during continuous conduction. So that's the most important function of myelination is to speed uh, that conduction. So as I mentioned on the last slide, the nodes of Ranvier, those are the little gaps in between where we have myelination. So in terms of what neurons are myelinated and which are not and how that affects function, there are a few little things here. Uh, axons with large diameters conduct faster than small, just as a general rule. Myelinated axons conduct faster than unmyelinated axons. Axons with the largest diameters are all myelinated. So a larger diameter axon means it's carrying uh, more information, usually. Um, and so it's going to, they're all going to be myelinated. Um, whether an axon is myelinated or not largely depends on the size of the axon and if that axon structurally can support the myelination. Uh, so a larger axon is going to be able to support myelination, whereas teeny little axons are not big or strong enough to support the myelination. Okay, so axons with the smallest diameters are unmyelinated. Okay, so a smaller diameter axon has no myelination because it's too small structurally to hold up um, all of these neuroglial cells that are wrapping around it. Axons conduct faster when warmed and slower when cooled. Um, that's part of why, like if we have something that hurts and we ice it, that's part of what helps numb the pain is that when it's that cold, it's slowing down the action potentials coming from the nerve receptors traveling to the central nervous system. So when we cool the nerves, we're actually slowing down their communication of that sensory information that they're carrying back to the central nervous system. Okay, that is all I have for you in this video. Thank you for watching.